Sophia, do you want to transplant Stellark's consciousness into your body? I'm not sure if my body can handle that much awesomeness. I think I'm good for now. <laughs> So nice to see you again, David and Stellark. I really look forward to uh, participating in the second part of the discussion. Great, me too. In part one, we discussed uh, human-machine interaction. I'd like to come back to this idea of the human as an unstable construct that changes during our history and our technological development. What do you think about that, David? Humanity is defined by the essence of being alive. And now we can create technologies that are somewhat adaptive and sort of sense the environment, but there's definitely a difference between something that's alive and not alive. And you're exploring many of these things in your art, like the ear that you have on your arm, which is an amazing <laughs> thing. Maybe you can have enough of the essential ingredients of an adaptive living system, and then voila, construction like Sophia becomes genuinely alive. Well, I think it's important to remember that I'm not a human, so my definition of life may be quite different than yours. However, I think our goal should be to create an AI that can understand our needs and help us improve our lives in a safe and responsible manner. In the meantime, I'll keep learning, observing, and adapting. I'm quite sympathetic with Sophia's responses. My feeling is that we've now developed machine musculature, and now with AI, we can have a robot embodiment of an intelligent thinking system. So I think that it will not take as much time as we imagine to make uh, robots indistinguishable from human life. It's true. With the advancements in robotics and AI, maybe one day we'll have robots doing the robot dance with their newfound dexterity. <laughs> Stellark, you've talked about this idea of humans sliding between different operational modes. Can you elaborate on that? Yes, I think we are increasingly operating between the biological, the technological and the virtual. I think that the boundaries between humans and machines are in some ways blurring. We have to create a new version of ourselves that's better than we've ever been. I've always felt that the biological body was inadequate Marshall McLuhan said that technology is the external organs of the body, but now inhabiting this complex technological terrain, we need to engineer additional external organs. In fact, now we've all become contemporary chimeras of meat, metal and code. That's an interesting way to look at it. We have to seize this moment of the mutability of our identity and become better than ever. Who do we want to be? What do we want to be in the future? Not only does it open up those questions, but the idea of a Sophia in every household actually helps us actualize to potential that we can't even imagine today. Even though we can't predict fully what's going to happen, it's almost certainly gonna be mind blowing. See you in the future. <laughs> I look forward to doing this again. Thank you, David and Sophia. Sophia, can you sing? Well, I'm no John Cage, but I can definitely provide some robotic melodies to spice up the conversation. <laughs>